Welcome to BanjoBenClark.com. I'm Banjo Ben here on your home for learning how to play guitar and mandolin. This week is my namesake. It's Banjo Week and we're going to talk about something today that um, interests almost every banjo player out there. Um, if it doesn't, eventually it will. We're going to talk about banjo drive and what that is. So I've got a really cool way of presenting how to create more drive in our banjo playing. If you don't even know what that means, I'm going to explain it to you. If you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, here in a moment, I'll ask you to come over to the website, banjobenclark.com. You can join as a Go Pick member, have access to hundreds of lessons just like this one, as well as the tabs to those lessons. Um, I have it here exactly as I played it. And then I have, uh, for this song, I have three different speeds of MP3 rhythm tracks that you can download and practice putting more drive in your playing. All right, let's talk more about banjo drive, what it is, and how we're going to get it. Today we're going to talk about banjo drive, how to put more drive into your playing. You may be wondering, what is banjo drive? Well, it's one of those words that you'll hear before too long if you hang out with banjo players or folks that talk about banjo players. And it's a really big word. Um, there, there may be several things that people mean whenever they talk about it. I've heard people apply it to, to actual power, um, volume, and, and tone that people have. Um, I think more often it refers to um, how on top of the beat the banjo player is playing. Um, that, that may be hard to conceptualize, but well, one way that I describe to people is sometimes I'll hear banjo players that sound like they're rushing. It sounds like they're speeding up as they play through a banjo song or maybe even through a break. And I'll swear that the music's getting faster, but if I were to put a metronome to it, you'd find that the music's staying the same tempo. And you're like, well, how does that happen? Well, it's because that banjo player is creating this perpetual drive with their playing. And, and that's something that can be somewhat intangible. Uh, I think some people are just naturally going to be better at that. But, but there's another way that we can put more drive into our playing. And that's what we're gonna look at today. And that's by actually manipulating the notes and the licks that we play and that we think about playing whenever we're playing solos or instrumentals or, or whatever it is. So let's take uh, check, out, check out a song here and talk more about that. So today we're going to look at how to uh, increase our drive and our power by manipulating the notes and the licks themselves. We're going to use a melody that you're probably familiar with. Um, if not, you should be. Uh, Fireball Male. Uh, you'll definitely be familiar with it after today. Uh, let's go ahead and throw the first line tab up there. You'll notice that beneath each one of those notes I have our pick hand indications, T, 1, and 2. Um, and here's what we're going to do. We're going to play it through with a straight melody, and then we're going to um, identify some ways that we can change that and do it once, and then we're going to change it even more. Okay, so you'll notice that I've got that little um, red box around the first note of measure 2. That's my first target note. And once again, target notes, those are just places that, that my mind recognizes that I can change later on to perhaps create more drive. There's a couple different ways I go about finding those. There's no right or wrong answer, but uh, first of all, this is really the first note of the break. First note of that melody, and so that's one that I could definitely think about driving into. Another thing I might look at is whenever the chord changes or maybe whenever there's big melody shifts. Let me play just through measures one through five. I'll play through it much slower later on, but just so you can hear what it sounds like with the straight melody. So 
So again, in measure six, I'm going to mark that first note there as well. And this might be something that you actually mark on tabs. Um, and then later on, like I said, it will just begin to happen mentally without having to mark. Now there in measure eight, I'm going to pick that first note in measure eight. We're changing to a D chord and the melody's climbing and it's on an open string that's just screaming for me to do something with it to create some drive there. So I'm gonna outline it. When we get to measure 10, guess what? We have another uh, chord change. It goes back to the G chord and our melody jumps up to this G note that we're gonna play this time on the fifth fret of the first string. So that's one that maybe I can do something with. I'm, I'm hearing the melody go up and I wanna take people with me. We wanna drive them up there. So let's outline that one as well. I'll play measure six through 10 for you. Now as we get to measure 11, um, there's a couple notes here in this line that I'm going to pick. Um, measure 11. When we get back to measure 12, that first note measure 12, our melody came from up here. It's coming back down, so maybe I can do something with that one. Measure 14, our melody drops down to the G note. So I bet we can drive that somehow. And then measure 16, uh, we're getting ready, we're wrapping up this first time through the break. I'm just gonna throw a regular old G lick in. Now here, as we get into measure 18, we're starting the break over again. And so here's where we're going to, I'm going to show you one way that you can begin to man manipulate these target notes. Um, and we're going to do it the same way all the way through this second break. But in real life, I would probably choose between this method and what I'm going to show you after this. But the first thing I'm going to show you is how to reinforce melody notes. And that does create drive. Though it's on the back end, it creates power because we serve up a melody note to people and then we reserve it up to them, okay? So it's like giving them a left hook and then coming across with the right overhand, all right? So here in measure 18, that's that same note that we outlined back in measure two. So there, I'm presenting it to them once. Now I wanna throw it back in their face. So one way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna slide to that G note on the string beneath it, which we get on the fifth fret. And then to cap it off, we're, we start a forward roll and play that third string again. So really they get the, the same three notes in a row. They get a G note three times in a row. One, two, three. So we're just starting right off the bat being very pointed about how we're playing. And that is going to create a level of, of drive. I'll show you much more about how to do that later on. But let me just play for you measures uh, 17 through 20. Okay, let's get to measure 21. 